Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Pearson Chi-Square goodness of fit test using R or specifically R Studio. Uh, to show you I'll be using an example and for that example I need some data which I've stored in a CSV file and I'm going to be loading that with uh, all of this, the separator or semicolons and something about uh, missing values and let me just load that in and it's going to be stored under my data and I can actually show you my data it only consists out of two variables and the one I'm interested in today is the marital one the next thing is then to actually store the frequency table as a table so table and then my data and then the variable of interest so let's load that control enter and you will need the expected proportions um, I'm going to be assuming that all of the five categories have uh, equal uh, proportion so one-fifth for each so I'm going to be storing proportion and then repeat one-fifth five times um, if you have a specific desire of proportion for uh, any of the categories you can also just list them one by one but in this case I want equal proportion so this five up here is actually because I have five categories and uh, this five is then the same as that one that way everything is divided equally then to perform the test, I use chi-square.test, which is in R Studio Base. My frequency as the table. The proportions that I expect are in the prop stored, and I don't want to use any continuity corrections. In the results, in the console, I now see the chi-square value, the degrees of freedom, and the significance value of that. In this case, it's below 0.05 so most people would consider this significant so at least a oh, one of the categories is significantly different from uh, one-fifth or overall they're different um, it might be good to check the criteria for the expected values so uh, um, you can actually store the expected values and then uh, show them in this case they're all the same because I'm using the same expected proportion for each if this is different they might change a little bit um, it might be of interest to see how many are below 5 if one is below 5 in this case all of them will be below 5 but like I said if you change the expected proportions then um, it might actually vary a little bit so let's load this one in and then I have indeed a zero cells below uh, 5 the number of cells in total uh, which in this case is 5 so that was done by using length and then as a proportion you can simply divide those two and in this case that will be 0 also the minimum expected count is sometimes useful so min of the expected counts and then finally uh, the sum of all the frequencies so you know your sample size and in this case that's 1941 and that's all there is to it